Okay, we are talking about angels. Everybody say angels. angels. Said there's almost 300 scriptures in the Bible on angels. Uh, are there angels out there? Absolutely, yes. And did you see Dr. Moses? I have to call him a doctor now. He got his doctorate degree. Dr. Moses shared about the angel that came into his meeting when he was in Africa. I'm telling you, angels are real. Amen? So I'm going to continue where we left off. We're going to talk about angels. What did we find out about angels yesterday? Number one, they're ministering spirits. Our base scripture, of course, is Hebrews 1.14. I'm not going to keep you long, but I do want to continue teaching on angels. Amen? Hebrews 1.14. What does Hebrews 1.14 say? Uh -huh. Are not, are not, there's a question. Are not the angels all? Everybody say all angels. So that means what he's saying is all angels are ministering spirits. All angels were created to serve. How many angels were created to serve? All. All angels were created to serve. And they're ministering spirits. That means top-notch service. Or, or not all angels, ministering spirits, sent out in the service of God. So first of all, they're all ministering spirits. Secondly, they've been sent out. Everybody say, they were sent out. God sent them out. We found out, of course, uh, uh, in uh, Acts 2, when they were sent out. In Acts 2, they were sent out on the day of Pentecost. So every Christian would have angels to help them fulfill God's plan for their life. Every, every Christian has angels appointed to them. You have, and we found out, well, you have over a thousand angels appointed to you. What are you doing with your angels? Angels are countless. They're innumerable. You can't even number them. That's how many there are. And so they were sent out. Why were they sent out? Sent out in the service of God for who were the angels sent for? For the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation. Everybody shout, that's me. You inherited salvation. So they are your assistance. Everybody say, my assistance. They are your army. They are your assistance. Everything in the Old Testament that God did, He did it through His hosts, through His army of angels. And we discovered there are many sizes of angels. We discovered angels can create earthquakes. Didn't we find that out yesterday? Angels can give you guidance. We found out that angels can give you strength. So we've got all these angels out there assigned to us. The question is, what are we doing with our angels? We found out that angels meet our physical needs. In the desert, the the angels were the ones that provided food for Jesus after 39 days in the desert. Food and water. Who brought the food and water? Angels. We found out that they not only provide physical need, they give you strength. Uh, we found out in Luke when Jesus needed strength in the Garden of Gethsemane, God sent an angel. So angels can give you strength. We also found out that angels can give you spiritual guidance. Uh, Cornelius was praying to get to know God better. So what? who showed up? Everybody shout an angel. And said, now go send for Peter. And he'll give you more information about the true and the living God. So what did we learn? That when Cornelius prayed, everybody say, when he prayed, when he prayed. Angels, were angels were released to influence men to, influence men. to, bring, him the answer. to bring him the answer. Never forget that. So when he prayed, what happened? Angels were released. Hmm. Angels only understand the Word of God. They watch what you pray. They watch what you say. They watch what you do. We found out that angels are the watchmen on the walls assigned to watch everything that you're praying and saying so they can carry it out. Everybody with me so far? So this is, this is uh, what we've been learning so far. And angels perform superhuman feats, like moving the uh, rock in front of the tomb. Four men couldn't move it, but one angel came down and just moved it with one hand. Are you getting a hold of this? And you have those angels assigned to you. Everybody say, I got them. What else did we find? That angels are your reapers. Who are your reapers? The angels, have you been sending out your reapers to bring in your harvest? See, when the harvest is ready, the Bible says, well, the, let me put it up there. Mark 4, 26. Mark 4, 26. You need to see this. Mark 4, 26. Yeah, the graduates are all coming in now. Mark 4, 26. And the kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seed upon the ground. So the first thing we find out about the kingdom is that it contains seed. 
The second thing we find out, if God don't give you answers to prayer, He gives you seed. Hmm. And what does the man do? He doesn't keep the seed. What does he do? He plants the seed. He scatters it. Seed was always meant to be planted. Everybody with me so far? That's how God's kingdom works. Upon the ground. Next verse. And then continues sleeping and rising night and day while the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. So in God's kingdom, if you don't want to be judged for your mistakes, stop judging other people for their mistakes. You want to be forgiven every time you mess up? Be quick to forgive. Because you will reap whatsoever you sow. Amen? So now we know that's how God's kingdom works. So what do we do? We plant seed. We chill out. The seed is going to come up as a harvest whether you like it or not. It's going to happen. Hmm. The seed increases. He knows not how. Next verse. Verse 28. The earth produces by itself. God don't give you harvest. The earth produces harvest. God is in the seed business. Whatever you need, He'll give it to you in seed form. And then when you plant the seed, the seed becomes that harvest. Amen? The seed grows. Now watch this. Next verse. Verse 28. But when the grain is ripe, everybody say ripe. Ripe. Immediately, immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. He, who he. Everybody shout, the sower. sower. Who he? The sower. sower. What does the sower do? He sends out the reapers. So in other words, if you have not been sending out your angels, why are you upset that you don't see the harvest of your seed? It doesn't say God sends out the angels. It says he sends out the angels. So every time you plant seed, you're supposed to send out angels to do what? Influence men to do what? Bring the answer to your prayer. Are you getting a hold of this? That's how the kingdom works. So have you been sending out your angels? Well, I planted seed. I'm waiting for God to send the angels. God don't send angels. He gave them under your care, under your jurisdiction, under your authority. So you are supposed to send them out. Are you getting a hold of this? They are your reapers. So every time you plant seed, are your reapers bringing in your harvest? I don't know if they are. Well, that's because you haven't sent them out. If you send them out, you know that they are. Why? Because they actually hearken to what? The voice of the Word. Amen? As I give, it must be given back to me. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over. Shall men pour into my bosom? What does that mean? Now, angels, I just spoke the word. You hearken to that word. Angels, you go forth now and influence men to pour into my bosom the harvest of this seed. Somebody owned this building. But when I planted the seed that God told me and I sent out my angels, they couldn't keep this building anymore. Are you getting a hold of this? took seven months, but we got the building. Amen? Why? Every seed has a different time of harvest. Every time we needed something in the ministry, I planted seed. And guess what? I sent the angels. So don't just be a sowing, be a sending. Can I say that one more time? Don't just be a sowing, be a sending. Sow and send. Everybody say, sow and send. Write that down. Sow and send. Because your angels bring in your harvest. And you've been sowing, but you haven't been sending. Now send them out. So you can bring it. Here's the good news. Everybody say, spiritual seed seed. never dies. What does that mean? Every time you've been sowing and you haven't been sending, you can fix that right now. Spiritual seed is still alive. And what you've been sowing, you haven't seen the harvest, send the angels out now. They can still get that harvest to come to you. Because spiritual seed never dies. Your, Your harvest can be delayed, but it can never be denied. Are you getting a hold of this? So if you do it God's way, send out the reapers. Who are the reapers? The angels. Isn't that what we found out? The angels. And what happens? Sends forth the reapers and puts in the sickle. We le- we're learning that the sickle is the words of your mouth. And the words of sickle is your tongue. And the words of your mouth should correspond with faith. What is faith? Faith says, I got it when I prayed. Not when I saw it, but when I prayed. So that's why when I plant my seed, I say, I got it. Because the Bible says you've got to believe what? That you receive when? 
when you pray. So the moment I prayed is when I got it. So if I got it, I ought to be talking like that. Thank you, Lord, I got it. Amen? Amen? It's already been released. It's on its way to me. Now, now let me tell you something that I didn't share before, but I'm going to share it right now, and I'll probably share it again tonight. Say this after me. My angels angels always move move at the speed speed of of thought. Not minutes, not seconds, not hours. They move at the speed of thought. There's no distance in the spirit. So the moment you plant your seed and you believe that you receive, that means you've received your harvest by faith and you've commissioned your angels to now bring in your harvest, they move at that moment. They move and make things happen. The problem is not your angels. The delay is not your faith. Can I tell you why some harvest is delayed? Can I tell you? There was a minister. And he's a very famous minister, very successful minister. And one day, pastor, God told him, give your piano to this person in this church. He said, but I'm a a musician. I love my piano. It's a grand piano. And God says, I'm trying to bless you. Obey me. And he gave that piano to this person. But he needs a piano because he likes to play the piano. So he's waiting and saying, Lord, where's my, that's, that's a great seed, but where's my piano? Why piano? A month later, he's traveling, he's in a church, and he's telling this story. Nothing happens, right? A whole year goes by. Nothing happens. And he's going, God, I obeyed you. I sold the piano. By this time, everything, furniture in his house has changed. He had all the old furniture gone, all the new furniture in, and it's all white. And he's back in this church that he was there a year ago. And he's telling this story and he's teaching faith. And the lady comes up to him and says, I have a seven-foot grand piano, a white one, and God told me I'm supposed to give it to you. No, 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 watch, watch, watch. Here comes the heavy revelation. He said, when did God tell you to give it to me? And she said, a year ago when you came. So the delay in your harvest is not in your faith, not you obeying God, not the seed that God's telling you to plant. Sometimes the delay can be the men that was supposed to pour into your bosom are slow to obedience. Are you getting a hold of this? But the angels were sent. And the angels influenced a woman to pour her piano into this guy a year ago. It took her a year to obey. Are you getting a hold of this? And that year... mm, All right, I'm going to say this because you need to understand this. That year was a tough year for that lady. You know why? Because it was a year of disobedience. God had her harvest ready because that was her seed. But God couldn't release her harvest because she spent a whole year thinking about the seed when she should have planted it. Remember this statement, the speed of my obedience determines the speed of my harvest. Are you getting a hold of this? Once you understand that, all of a sudden you see how things can move a lot faster. So don't ever get mad with God. Don't ever say things are not going to work because your angels move at the speed of thought. Amen? Harvest stands ready. Everybody say, the harvest is ready. The harvest has always been ready. The harvest has been waiting for someone to obey. Write this scripture down if you don't have it. Matthew 13, 39. Matthew 13, 39. Mm. Matthew 13, 39. The enemy who sowed it is the devil. The harvest is close and, let's keep reading, the consummation of age and the reapers are what? Ah. So well, now we know who my reapers are. They're angels. They're the ones i got to send out. But I have to send them out. If you don't send out your angels, your angels will sit there and let your harvest stay in the field instead of coming into your barn. What does a reaper do? A reaper brings the harvest from the field into the barn. A reaper does what? Brings the harvest from the field into the barn. you got to harvest 
It's out there in the field. Why? Because you planted when God told you, and you spoke the right words, you released your faith, and guess what? The harvest is there. But where is it? In the field. Why? You have not yet sent out your reapers, which are your angels. Are you seeing how this thing works? You do it God's way, you will always, everybody say always, you will always see a harvest. Okay, two things I want God wanted me to mention. I'm going to get them out to you if I can. How do you see angels? Let's talk about that. Okay. Sometimes, everybody say sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes you can see angels with your physical senses. Sometimes. Maybe that's what happened to Dr. Moses. He was in this service and he saw the angel coming in from the back of the room, ministering to who? That lady that needed help. So sometimes you can see it with your natural eyes. But most of the time, everybody say most of the time. Most of the time. You're not going to see it with your natural eyes. But you have to understand that you have five physical senses. See, smell, feel, taste, touch. But you also have five spiritual senses. What does that mean? You're, you can see in the Spirit. In fact, mm, say this after me. I'm not a human being. I'm a spirit being that happens to live temporarily in a human body. So it's more natural for a spirit being to see in the Spirit. So can you see angels? Yes, you can. Where am I going to see them? In with my spiritual eyes, not your natural eyes. Are you getting a hold of this? You get, you get into worship, like we were just worshiping God with, with uh, 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 Brother Ted. Man, I'm telling you, this room was packed with angels. The only people that didn't see them are the ones that didn't stay. They didn't see the angels, and they went, why, why don't I ever see angels? Because you decide to leave when the angels move in. <laughs> angels love to worship God. Didn't we learn that last night? Angels were created to worship God. Amen? So you can see them with your spiritual eyes. And one of the things about going to the Holy Land, and I believe Kathy's going to come with me to the Holy Land and bring her daughter. Amen? We're going to walk where Jesus walked, teach what Jesus taught in September. How many of you have been with me to the Holy Land? Stand up. If you've been with me to the Holy Land, stand up. And now, now just watch this. I'm going to ask one question of these people. How many of you that have been with me to, to the Holy Land can testify that you actually saw angels in the Holy Land? Yes. Amen. If you didn't see angels, please sit down. If you saw angels, keep standing. Uh, look at these. Five of them are still standing. They saw angels. Why? Because your spiritual senses come alive. Amen. You start to see in the Spirit. Why? Because Holy Land is a portal between the natural realm and the spirit realm. That's where the angels were going up and down the ladder. Amen? So if you say, I wish I could see angels, everybody say, go to Israel, go to Israel. with Dr. Nasser. <laughs> you guys could be seated. Amen? Your spiritual eyes will open up. Your spiritual ears will open up. You will hear things in the Spirit because we're supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. You will tune into the voice of the Holy Spirit and stronger than you ever have before. You will have experiences with God like you've never had before. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Not through this natural mouth, through your spiritual mouth. You have a spiritual sense that can see, smell, feel, taste, and touch. Your spiritual senses come alive when you come to the Holy Land. Amen? And that's what we want. That's why our trip to the Holy Land always has to do with a spiritual experience. Okay. Did I have a phone somewhere? Hmm. Somebody dial my phone. We've got to find my phone. Somebody, oh, it's on silent. Oh, my goodness. Can you find my phone? I don't know where it is, but you can, we can dial it. The vibration should be on. I think I turned it off, but I did, I did have a phone. You have a phone with a light on it? I don't, it's not up there. I just went up there. Mm -hmm. Who's got a phone with a light? Oh, there you go. My phone is somewhere in this building. Can you pass? Oh, can I, we got the, okay, we got yours. Okay, I got Kathy's. All right. <laughs> Let there be lights. <laughs> More than one. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about seeing angels. 
Mm -hmm. Come with me to 2 Kings 6.17. 2 Kings 6.17. That's your phone, right? Okay. 2 Kings 6.17. They'll find it. Somewhere we'll find it. 2 Kings... We found it? Huh? Oh, man. You're awesome. I don't care what Aaron says about you. <laughs> Why is it ringing for Terry Miller? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Message. Call you later. All right. Here we go. Got it. All right. Where are we? Uh-huh. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray you do what? Open his eyes. That means Elisha and his servant were surrounded by the army of their enemies. And the servant looked out the window, and he saw these armies surrounding their home, ready to kill them. And the servant said, oh, we are surrounded by enemies. They're going to kill us. Not one time did Elisha say, help, Lord. Not one time. You know what he said? God opened his eyes. He mean his natural eyes? No, his natural eyes were always open. That's how he saw the enemies of the armies. That's what made him afraid. So he could see with his natural eyes what needed to be opened. His spiritual eyes. Are you getting? So what we do in Israel, we practice opening our spiritual eyes. Ooh. And say, God, open his spiritual eyes. Hmm. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Wow, this was the host of angels that surrounded the earthly army that was coming against them. They were totally, completely outnumbered. Watch this. Uh huh. The fire about Elisha. Next verse. And when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Smite this people with, your, with blindness, I pray you. And God smote them with blindness, as Elisha asked. So now we found out who became blind? The enemy. Who surrounded the army of the enemies? The angels. Now did you notice he said, open his spiritual eyes. He didn't say, send the army. No, you're not getting this. I'll make it real plain. Everybody say this after me. The angels, the angels were, always were always there. there. What does that mean? Just because they couldn't see them doesn't mean they were not there. Yeah. Just because you can't see the angels assigned to you doesn't mean they're not there. My angels are in this room right now. How do you know they're here? Because I'm in this room right now. How can they watch over me if they can't be where I'm at? Didn't we learn that they were watchmen? Didn't we learn that they watch what I pray, what I say, and what I do? How can they do that if they're not with me? Every time I get on a plane, those angels are with me on that plane. Their job is to protect me. So they're always with me. Your angels are always with you. But sometimes they don't do anything because you don't give them any decrees. You don't give them any assignments. Are you getting a hold of this? They've been waiting on you. You're not waiting on your angels. They're always there. So those angels were always there. What were they doing? Protecting Elisha. That's why they were there. They were there for his protection. And that's why Elisha wasn't worried. He didn't say, I'm worried. Help me, Lord. He said, just open his eyes. What does that mean? Elisha could see the army of angels. The servant couldn't. Are you getting a hold of this? So just because you can't see your angels, stop thinking they don't exist. They're right here. Angels are real. They're countless and they're innumerable. Everybody say innumerable. Psalms 91, verse 1. Psalms 91, verse 1. Hmm. This is the psalm that I use for my protection. Because I commission the angels. Hmm. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. That means if I want to be under the shadow of Almighty, how, this is called, everybody say, the place, the place. Of, all of all protection. Do you want to be in the place of all protection? 
Do you want your family to be in the place of all protection? Do you want your children to be in the place of all protection? How about your grandchildren? You want them always to be in protection. They will be there if you will dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay, we got that. But how do I dwell under the shadow of the Almighty? The answer was in the next verse. I will say. I will what? Say. The shadow comes over you based on your words. Can I say that one more time? The protection comes over you based on your words. There is the shadow of the Almighty, and it's over there. But the problem is, it'll always stay over there. doesn't matter what I'm wishing on, what I'm hoping, what I'm bawling, what I'm squalling, and what I'm praying. What moves that shadow over me? I will say. The moment I say something, that protection comes right over my head, right over my family. What have I got to say? Because we live in a what? Voice-activated system. So your words activate your world. Your words change your world. The power of death and the power of life is not with God. It's not with the devil. The Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue. Amen? What you say changes your world. So if I want protection, I've got to say something. I can't think it, wish it, and hope it. No. I've got to make a decree. I've got to make a declaration. What happens when I say something? My angels move that shadow directly over me. What brings the protection over me? My angels. What moves my angels? My words. Are you getting a hold of this? I will say. What will I say? God is my refuge. God is my fortress. When I say that, my God and in Him I lean and trust and rely and in Him I confidently trust. The moment I say God is my refuge, God is my fortress, my angels move that covering over me. A lot of people praying for protection, but they don't know how to get protection. God, protect me. No, you have to say something. What do I say? He is my refuge. Let me share something with you that will bless you. The throne of God is not round. You ever seen a diamond? A diamond has many sides. That's the way God's throne looks. Because God has many sides. How do you know God has many sides? Because God has many names. Hmm. Some people call him Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi. These are all facets of God. Are you with me? Jehovah, my healer, my provider, my protector. What you call him, he will become for you. He's all those things, but he's not all those things for you. He's only what you call him for you. If you don't call him your refuge, he's no longer your refuge. If you don't call him your savior, he's no longer your savior. If you don't call him your healer, he's no longer your healer. So my question to you is, what have you called him today? Today. Not what did you call him six months ago. Not what did you call him when you were studying the word. What did you call him today? Today I call him my refuge. Today I call him my salvation. Today I call him my protector. And because I call him that today, that's the side of him that I see over me today. The angels move immediately and put that covering over me and my family. When? Today. Because that's what I call him today. I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress. You know why the word fortress is used? It's very tough to break through a fortress. Not made of straw. This is a serious fortress. The angels cannot break through. Why don't bad things happen to me? Well, the devil tries. He does try. You saw the stroke. But you know what? We came out of that. Within six days of that stroke, they released me from the hospital walking. Within six weeks of that stroke, I took 23 pastors and ministers to the Holy Land. We walked where Jesus walked, taught where Jesus. The doctors in St. Francis Hospital are still in shock. Why I'm totally, completely... Ted was, in, Ted was in the hospital with me, right, Ted? He'll testify. And you know what? Now I'm completely restored. Why? Because I said something. What did I say? He is my refuge. He is my fortress in whom I will trust, lean, and rely on. Verse 3. Psalms 91, verse 3. 
These are the words that are coming out of your mouth. Psalms 91 verse 3. Here we go. I will say. Everybody say, I will say. say. Everybody say, my words words. moves my angels. angels. Mm. You haven't stopped saying. Oh yeah, verse 2 was just the beginning of what you say. What else do I say? For then he will deliver. When will God deliver me? The moment that I say. Not when I pray. Uh Uh-uh. Jesus is not the high priest of your uh, prayer. He's the high priest of your confession. Hebrews 3.1. He's the high priest of what you say, not the high priest of what you pray. Are you getting a hold of this? Mm. Then, then, when then? When I say. What happens when I say? He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. That means I get protection when I say. Got it? Okay, that's when my angels start moving. Next verse. Verse 4. He will cover me with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find. When will he cover me? When I say. Got it? Uh Uh-huh. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. Next verse. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the... Oh. Oh. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you believe the word? Are you believers in this house? So do you believe that if you say, He is my refuge and my fortress, the angels will cover you with protection? Do you believe that? If you believe that, then you should not be afraid. When I see Christians afraid, you know what I see? Christians that don't believe the Word. They're not in faith, they're in fear. Mm. Are you getting a hold of this? If they were in faith and they actually believed God's Word, they would not be afraid. I don't care what's going on around the world. I don't care what COVID-19 is doing. I don't care how many people die. Can't touch me. Why? My angels have put me in the fortress of protection. Everybody say, can't touch me. me. Uh Uh-huh. Why? Because I said something that created this protection around me. And when I said it, you can put COVID on my hand and it'll die. That's why I love to hug people because I tell them, you hug me and the anointing on me is going to kill the COVID on you. You want to get rid of that COVID? Just give me a hug. You see how fast that COVID will die. (laughs) Are you getting a hold? You actually believe that? I'm a believing believer. We got too many unbelieving believers in the church. We need to have more believing believers. Everybody say, if God said it, it. that settles it. That's it. It's done. Amen? Uh, It's settled in my mind. You will not be afraid of the terror by night. You'll not be afraid of any pandemic. You'll not be afraid of any COVID-19. Nor of the arrow and the evil plots. That's uh, that slander of the wicked that flies by day. I'm not going to be afraid of anything. Uh Uh-uh. Next verse. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Uh Uh-huh. Nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. I will not be afraid. Everybody shout, no more fear. No more fear. Why? Because I've sent my angels to put protection around me. Every time I get on a plane, I tell my angels to put protection around me. Every time I travel in the car, we cover that vehicle with uh, the angels protecting that. Do that all the time. I'm constantly sending my angels out every day. Everybody say, every day. What's the point of you getting an army from God if you ain't going to use it? (laughs) That was a waste of an army. Come on now. (laughs) Now that army belongs to you and they're waiting on your decrees. They're waiting on your instructions. They're waiting on what you say. And they only speak the word. Next verse. A thousand may fall at your side. I don't care what's happening around you. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Are you seeing this, my brothers and sisters? A person that you and I know had COVID on one of his grandchildren. My question is, what did he say that morning? I cover myself, my family, and my grandchildren with the angels. Are you doing that with your kids? Are you doing that every morning with your grandkids? Hmm? If you are, they're going to be okay. If you're not, you're opening the door. Amen? So we need to do that. We need to do that. Got it? Everybody say, I need to do that. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I travel all over the world. I got one son in Washington, D.C., and right now he's in Chicago, and he's traveling all the time. But you know what? I make sure that he's covered under protection. Got another son that travels back and forth to China. I make sure he's covered. Got another son studying to be an optometrist right here in Tulsa. I make sure he's covered. I got three granddaughters. I want to make sure they're covered. So I make sure I send angels to cover them every day. Are you getting a hold of this? This whole pandemic, my kids went to school. Uh -huh. my, 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 sorry, my grandkids went to school. Not one of them got COVID. Kids, not one of them got COVID. Not one. Me, I travel and I'm with people all the time. All the time, I'm hugging people. They did not get COVID. How can that be? They said, you're a prime candidate. You, you have a pre-existing condition. I said, I do? Yeah, you had a stroke. So you have a pre-existing condition. You are a prime candidate for COVID. Everybody shout, he, got, he didn't get it. Didn't get it. Why? Because I cover myself every morning. I send my angels to protect me every morning. If you've not been doing that, that's why you have so much sickness in your family. Because you're not doing that. You can do it for your family. Can't do it for everybody else, but you can surely do it for your family. Amen? Are you getting a hold of this? God gave you angels so you would be protected. Next verse, verse 8. Only, I love this, only a spectator will you be. I just sit back and watch it happen to other people. That ain't going to happen to me. Uh-uh. Shall be yourself inaccessible. I'm inaccessible to the devil. How do you know that? Because I'm in the secret place. Put the rest of this, of the Most High. How did you get there? I sent my angels to put me under the fortress. They put that over me everywhere that I go. As you witness the reward of the wicked. Other people are going to get that, but not me. I'm going to live by faith. Everybody say faith. faith. By the way, you know what Romans says about faith? Ouch. Anything that isn't faith is what? Sin. That means if you don't believe what I just read, and you're not in faith, you are in what? Sin. Mm. Let's stay in faith. Next verse. Because you have made the Lord your what? Yes. Refuge. Now watch, watch, watch up. Why am I safe? Because you, nobody else, have made the Lord your refuge. How did I make the Lord my refuge? I spoke it. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. Verse 2. Because I did verse 2 is the reason I made him my refuge. So if you haven't made him your refuge every morning, then why are you upset that bad things are happening? You didn't make him your refuge. You have to do it. It's not automatic. Did you notice there's not one naked person in the room? You know why? You made it your business to put some clothes on. God didn't put any clothes on you. You put the clothes on you. And if you didn't put the clothes on you, we would have the police take you away. <laughs> you had to make a decision to do that. So if you didn't make a decision to do that, you'd show up here naked, and then we would all be embarrassed for you. Thank God that you made a decision to put some clothes on. Why are bad things happening in your family? You've not yet made a decision. And sent the angels to clothe you and your family as his fortress, his refuge. Are you seeing this? This is why it was so important to get this. I wanted to get this teaching to you. Next verse. Verse 10. There shall be what? No evil. How much evil shall befall you? None. Everybody say, can't touch me. Can't touch me. Uh-huh. But you're going to have to believe this. You have to believe the Word. You, and we heard earlier, you've got to be a doer of the Word, not a hearer only. In other words, you've got to practice this. You've got to do this. And if you're a doer of the Word, guess what is going to happen? That's why Dr. Ellis was talking just now in the ceremony. You've got to do the Word. You've got to live the Word. You've got to renew your mind with the Word. 
If you do, no evil shall befall you. That doesn't mean, no, 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 whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Everybody say, no evil, no evil. Will, befall will befall me. That doesn't mean there won't be no evil created. Weapons will be formed against you. Number one, weapons will come against you. Number two, but they have no legal right to prosper if you will stay in faith. Amen? A stroke could come on me. A stroke could make me paralyzed and make me get to the hospital. But that stroke can only stay on me if I allow it. I won't allow it. And because I wouldn't allow it, no weapon could take me down. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. But no weapon formed against your children can prosper. No weapon formed against your grandchildren can prosper. Because you have covered them. You have a legal right to do that. As for me and my house, I have that right. I can cover them to, with, with refuge and fortress, with protection. Are you seeing this? We've got to do that, huh? No, no plague or calamity come near your tent. Uh, not in my house. Uh-uh. COVID, you go to somebody else's house. You're not going to hang around in my house. For he will give his what? Angels. Four. 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 What does the word four mean? It means everything from verse 1 to verse 10 will come to pass because of verse 11. Why will 1 to 10 come to pass? Because your words activated verse 11. Four means that the, this is why it's going to happen. This is why no evil can come before you. Because, why? He will give charge, uh-huh, his angels charge over you. Has he given his angels charge over you? Yes, he has. Then how come bad things happen to good people? They forgot about verse 2. Every covenant, every contract has two parts. You got to do your part and God will do his part. You hire a plumber to come and work for you, and he does the work. You are responsible to pay him. If he doesn't do the work, you're no longer responsible to pay him. If you don't do part two, you don't speak, God is not responsible to have angels protect you. But if you speak, if you do your part of the covenant, God will do his part of the covenant. Are you getting a hold of this? Because you did verse 2, all of verse 1 to 10 will happen to you. Why? Because verse 2 activated those angels. He will give his angels. In other words, the angels have a charge. Everybody say charge. Everybody say mandate. Everybody say instruction. Everybody say command. In other words, the angels are commanded to protect you. Then why don't they protect me? Because they're waiting on your agreement of God's Word. That's why they only listen to the Word. Did you say to your angels, Hey angels, you got to protect me. Why? Because the Word says, You have been given charge to protect me. Every time I get on a plane, I talk to my angels and say, Angels, you got no choice in this matter now. You've been given charge by God, and now I'm giving the Word to you. Because you've been given charge to protect me, you will protect this plane. This plane will take me to my destination. Nothing will go wrong. I've got an angel on one wing. I've got an angel on the second wing. I never leave home without my angels. You saw yesterday how big my angels are. They could not fit into this room. That's how big they are. They're huge. And I don't leave home without them. I encourage you not to leave home without your angels. Are you seeing this? For he will give charge, special charge, special charge, not just a charge, a special charge over you to accompany, to accompany. Everybody say accompany. So the angels are with you whether you use them or not. And what did we learn yesterday? Go ahead, break the speed limit. Your angels don't. <laughs> they're moving, but they're, only, they're not going to violate the laws of the land. So when you get to your destination, you better wait a little bit there for your angels to catch up. You don't want to go any further without those angels. Amen? They will accompany you. Uh-huh. Oh, and what? Next verse. And defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. 
You see what the angels are commissioned to do? Waiting on your instruction. They're their watchmen. They're your watchmen. They're watching what you pray. They're watching what you say. They're watching what you do. That's why those angels were given to you. Are you getting this? Okay, good. So let's go to uh, Psalms 103.20. What are those angels waiting for? Let's find out. They're waiting for you to open your mouth and speak. Bless the Lord, you his what? Angels. Same word. Who hearken to what? His angels, you mighty ones. We'll keep the rest of this. Who do his commandments, hearkening to what? The voice of his word. Hearkening means they move to what? The voice. Somebody's got to give this book voice. When you speak the word, they don't speak any other language. They only speak the word. So when you speak the word, the word says you've been given charge to protect me. Sir, he spoke the word. I got to do something. The word says that you're supposed to meet all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. The word says, as I give, it shall be given back good measure, pressed down, shaking and running over, shall men pour into our bosom. The angels go, yes, sir. We will influence men now to bring you the harvest of your seed. Are you getting a hold of this? Use your angels for protection, for strength, for guidance, for bringing your harvest, for divine connections, for open doors. Use your angels. They can open doors. Any door that man opens is any door that man can close. But any door that God opens is a door that no man can ever close. God connected us, Richard. No man can close that door because it was a divine connection. Most of you here know that we, I, I, there was no way she knew she was going to meet me or I knew I was going to meet her. It was a divine connection in Houston. There were lots of ladies in the front row, but this is the one God connected me to. <laughs> Are you getting a hold of this? When you know it's a divine connection, don't break the connection. Probably the person that knows me the longest is Ted. Ted, how long have we known each other, you said? 20, 25 years? You said we knew each other when we were three, is that it? <laughs> 20, all right, four, okay. <laughs> 25 years. God ordained this connection. I didn't set it up. I didn't know him. I came from another country. He didn't know me, but God set this thing up. And you know what? Because God set it up, I won't ever break this connection. And I don't believe Ted will either. If God divinely connects you, don't break that. Why? God doesn't connect without purpose. So if God connected us, there's a purpose behind it. If God connected us, there's a purpose here. Don't break that connection or you will not fulfill the purpose. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. So now they're waiting on me to speak. Uh -huh. They are my reapers. Isn't that what we learned? So what do we do? We send out the reapers. Go back to Mark 4, 28. Once we planted our seed, we send out our reapers. Mark 4, 28. Mm -hmm. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. Your seed is always uh, going to grow in a period of time. Seed, time, harvest. There's a time in there. Okay? That the, the speed of that, your harvest is based on the speed of your obedience. As you obey God, you cause the angels to move. And angels move at the speed of what? Light, thought. The speed of thought. Amen. Next verse. So once you plant your seed, then immediately when the grain is ripe, permits immediately, He sends forth the reapers. So today, you, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and you're going to send out your reapers. I'm not going to send out reapers for you. I'm going to lead you in a confession on how you send them out. Is that okay? So you will learn how to do that. Send out. Why? Because the harvest stands ready. Amen? So God don't give harvest. 2 Corinthians 9.10, God gives what? Seed. He in the seed business. And every time you get blessed, you have to stop and ask the Lord, is this blessing for me in all its totality or is this my seed for something you got for me much bigger? 
or is part of this for me and part of this my seed? Do you know that every time a farmer gets a harvest, do you know what the farmer does not do? Eat the entire harvest. You know what would happen if the farmer ate the entire harvest? He would not have any more harvest. <laughs> so he takes his harvest and he looks at it and says, okay, this portion is seed to keep us going. This portion is harvest. So how do I know what portion is what? Pray and obey. The Lord will tell you, from that harvest, this much goes into seed, so you will have the next harvest. And this much is yours. Are you getting a hold of this? You, God always gives you direction if you will ask Him. One thing I found about God, God don't speak much, but He answers much. Which, what does that mean? That means you're going to have to ask Him. If you talk to him, he will always, everybody say always. always. He will always answer. Amen. You just got to wait long enough to get the answer. So 2 Corinthians 9.10, God gives what? Seed. Everything you need, God's answer is yes and amen. What does God give me when I have a need? He gives you the right seed. Job, right seed. Business, right seed. Open doors, right seed. Favor, right seed. House, right seed. Car, right seed. Getting out of debt, right seed. We wanted to get out of debt in this building. God gave me the seed. I planted it. 28 days later, this building was debt free. Somebody shout next. next. I just planted the seed. He told me. But enough money came in. We paid off the mortgage like that in 28 days. Why? Because I planted the seed. He told me. That's why you can't just throw money in a bucket. You've got to pray and obey. Because if you want God to get involved in your harvest, you've got to let Him pick the seed. Amen?